After a big earthquake shakes all of Paris, a deadly toxic mist released from the ground kills anybody who breathes it. The survivors have no choice but to go outside and risk breathing the deadly gas if they want to stay alive. Will they find a way to survive in the mist? Stay tuned to find out what happens. The movie starts with a young girl running in a field of flowers. As the gentle breeze blows through her hair, Mathieu wakes up from his dream. The first thing he does is call his daughter Sarah after the plane lands in Paris. He informs Sarah that he will be there in a short time. When he arrives at his apartment, Sarah asks him to come over using a walkie-talkie. Mathieu comes across their neighbor Monsieur Belkassim. He helps to carry Mr. Belkassim's oxygen tank inside and runs into his wife's apartment upstairs. His wife Anna welcomes him and quickly returns to continue teaching in the online class. In another room, Sarah welcomes her dad through the capsule she lives in. Sarah is one of the kids who have to live in airtight sealed capsules. Because of a mysterious disease called Total Allergy Autoimmune Syndrome, her parents, who are scientists, have been desperately searching for a cure. After greeting each other he puts the gift box in the capsule. Sarah finds it strange that the gift is sent bottles from Canada. Because her dad said he was traveling to Marseille. Mathieu tells her to check under the bottles. She finds an SD card for virtual reality goggles that shows the rocky mountains and wonderful nature. When Anna's online class is finished, Mathieu brings her the good news. He explains that he didn't go to Marseille for an interview. He went to Canada because a treatment for Sarah's disease had been discovered. He thinks they should move to Canada as they can take Sarah in for treatment. But Anna doesn't want to complicate things and she doesn't trust this method since it's new and unpublished. She argues that Sarah just started living after all these years of staying in the hospital. Mathieu expresses his anger because he thinks it cannot be called living. While they argue, Sarah chats with her friends Charlotte and Noé who also live in a capsule. Noé calls their group goldfish in a tank, but Sarah doesn't like that expression. She tells him to never say it again but she smiles when he explains that they are in fact like goldfish in a tank. Mathieu tells Anna to pack her bags immediately. He is determined to get Sarah out of the capsule, because he doesn't want their daughter to think they are giving up on her. But Anna asks him to wait and see the results. Mathieu storms out and goes back to his apartment. While Mathieu is in the shower, he hears the breaking news on the TV. The reporter says that a big earthquake has shaken Denmark and Sweden like never before. And shortly after that, an earthquake starts shaking Paris too. Mathieu runs out of his apartment to see what's happening. He sees that people and birds are escaping from something. Following the earthquake, poisonous fumes released from the ground starts to spread across the streets. Everyone who gets caught in and breathes it dies instantly. He runs back into Anna's apartment to protect his family from the mist. He immediately pulls Anna away from the window and warns her about the situation. Anna doesn't want to leave Sarah behind but Mathieu promises that they will return for her soon. Luckily, the mist turns out to be heavier than air but starts to fill the building quickly. Mathieu and Anna seek refuge above the mist. They bang on the door of the upper floor apartment of their elderly neighbors, Lucienne and Colette. Sarah is compelled to stay in the family's foggy apartment. The capsule is now only can function on battery power to maintain Sarah's air filtering system. After Lucienne takes everyone inside, Mathieu rushes to the window. He sees that the mist has stopped rising. Anna checks on Sarah using the walkie-talkie. She says that her room is filled with mist but the capsule protects her from it. Everyone in the apartment goes out to the balcony to check outside. They discover that the whole city is under the mist except on rooftops. Lucienne takes Colette back inside after she gets worried about their son. Mathieu and Anna try to figure out the source of the mist and two helicopters fly above them. In the apartment, Anna checks the capsule's power. The four bars remaining equals 10 hours of battery. Sarah also confirms it when they talk through the walkie-talkie. Mathieu finds binoculars and climbs to the rooftop to look at distant places. He realizes that the mist has completely taken over the city. Mathieu returns to the balcony and sees Lucien searching for a signal. He is confident that their son who lives two blocks away is secure because he is smart. However, he is making an effort to get in touch with him just in case. Colette comes onto the balcony and tells Lucien they should go outside and check on their son. Lucien had to remind her about the mist because she had memory issues. When they get back inside, Lucien looks through his closet for an old radio. He puts it over the table and everyone gathers to have a look at it. Meanwhile, Mathieu goes outside the apartment to closely examine the mist. He stirs it and smells his hand but nothing happens. He goes back inside and tells Anna that he wants to check on Sarah. Anna doesn't think it's a good idea since he cannot hold his breath long enough. Suddenly Mathieu remembers that their neighbor Mr. Belkasim has an oxygen tank. He packs a flashlight, hammer, and tape and climbs down using the pipes. He takes a deep breath and breaks into the apartment. While searching the house with the flashlight, he finds Mr. Belkasim's dead body. Luckily he finds the oxygen mask just before he runs out of breath. As he is getting ready to leave with the oxygen tank, he hears sounds coming from another room. When he opens the door, he discovers that the mist has killed the neighbor's elder dog. But the little puppy is still alive and it walks out of the room like the mist doesn't exist. He visits Sarah first and brings her supplies. He changes the batteries of the capsule and tells Sarah 
Sarah that she has to make herself scarce. He promises to come back soon and he goes outside to venture into the streets. The roads are dark and full of dead bodies because of the mist. Just when he is taking batteries from abandoned cars, he hears a whistle. He runs into the source and finds people evacuating the city with the help of some soldiers. The soldier that leads civilians to safety tries to get Mathieu in the line. He tells him that they are headed to Montmartre which is located on a hill unaffected by the mist. He equips Mathieu with a better oxygen mask with pure oxygen. Mathieu asks him about the mist. He says they don't know the source but it's coming from underground. Then he tries to get Mathieu in line again but he refuses to leave his family. The soldier informs him that they won't be able to come back to the city. Just before he leaves, Mathieu asks for an extra mask and they part ways after he takes the mask. In the apartment, Sarah and Anna communicate using walkie-talkies. Just when Anna is guiding her for exercises, Mathieu enters the apartment with new equipment. He tells everyone about what he saw on the streets. He asks Anna if she wants to visit Sarah using masks, but she refuses to save the oxygen in case of an emergency. Later that evening, they have a chat around the table as Anna tries to fix the radio. They ask about Sarah's condition and remind Anna about the day they entered the apartment carrying the capsule. While the others chat, Mathieu goes outside to check the hallway. He notices something strange and marks the current level of the mist. After going inside, he warns Anna about the increasing amount of mist. They realize that the current situation will only worsen from now on. Mathieu dozes off later but Anna is unable to close her eyes. She visits Sarah while she is asleep. She replaces the battery before leaving. Mathieu sees the same dream of a girl running in the field of flowers again. When he wakes up he sees that Anna finally fixed the radio. Yet there is nothing but the emergency calling on every channel. All of a sudden a huge explosion sound comes from the outside. Mathieu and Anna climb to the rooftop to see what is happening. They see rising flames and riots breaking out among the Montmartre survivors. They make a plan to flee to Sarah's friend Charlotte's house in the hills. Sarah and Charlotte have the same syndrome so they can share the capsule. They go to a lab located in the middle of Paris to get a sealed suit for transporting Sarah. They visit Sarah before they leave and tell her about the plan. Sarah asks them to find Noé but they are hesitant to waste their oxygen. Sarah reminds them his parents would do the same. So they go out in the streets and stop when they reach Noé's apartment. Just before they can enter, a dog comes out of nowhere. It starts to chase them and they split up accidentally while running away from the dog. Mathieu gets distracted and falls into the Seine River. Anna tries to hide in a bus but the dog continues to follow her. The dog's leash gets tangled with a suitcase and Anna exits the bus quickly. She searches for Mathieu in the river but Mathieu already found his way using the stairs. He notices a hazmat suit while removing the jacket from a dead body. He quickly replaces his wet clothes with dry ones and runs to Anna. They reunite in front of the lab. They ignore the bursting flames in one of the rooms and continue to search. They find the equipment they need in a suitcase. Carelessly they walk near the flames again and it finally explodes in their faces. The explosion throws them far away. They make it out alive, but Mathieu catches flames. Anna finds the extinguisher and puts the fire out. Anna realizes that Mathieu's oxygen tube gets irreparably damaged by the explosion. They reach the top of the building by sharing Anna's oxygen. Anna treats Mathieu's wounds. They realize her oxygen level gets too low for them both to use it. Mathieu tells he can move forward by climbing roofs to avoid mist. He tells Anna that she should return on her own using the mask. They kiss each other passionately before parting ways. Anna runs back home with a suitcase while Mathieu walks carefully through the rooftops. Anna Anna barely makes it out of the top floor apartment before her oxygen runs out. When she opens the suitcase she sees that the equipment was severely damaged by the explosion. Mathieu discovers a rope in the meanwhile, and it takes him to the rooftop of a parking garage. He notices bags of supplies, and a trail of blood draws his attention. He follows the trail, which leads him to a dead police officer's body. Then he enters the building and finds a little camp that holds an oxygen tank and rifle. He takes the tank and walks out to the exit. He encounters a guy in a uniform before leaving. The cop tells him about the current situation about the mist rising by the hour. Then the cop pulls his gun to shoot Mathieu but he quickly puts the mask on. Mathieu jumps on him and they land on a car and they struggle for power. Mathieu keeps him restrained before he can reach the gun. The mist kills him and Mathieu takes the gun with him. Back in the apartment, Sarah questions Anna about the afterlife and God. Sarah's capsule runs out of battery in the middle of their chat. Anna prepares to change the batteries without a mask on. Lucienne and Colette are worried about her thinking she won't be able to hold her breath for so long. Lucienne offers to go instead of her which makes Anna grateful, but she ultimately refuses to send Lucienne inside the mist. While they argue, Sarah talks through the walkie-talkie. She asks Anna about falling in love and confesses that she is having a crush on someone. Anna gives her a final pep talk about love and life then tells her that she loves her. Next, she takes a deep breath and runs into their apartment. Sarah gets worried when her mom doesn't respond anymore. Her capsule runs out of battery and she panics. Then Anna rushes into the room 
room and changes the battery quickly. She takes a long look at Sarah before leaving. Sarah shouts into walkie-talkie to get a response from Anna. At that moment Mathieu enters the building and hears Sarah's noise echoing in the apartment. He rushes into her room and Sarah explains what her mother just did. He runs to the stairs quickly. He gets devastated upon seeing Anna's lifeless body. He throws himself in the apartment while crying. Lucienne and Colette ask him the whereabouts of Anna. They hear Sarah asking what happened to his mother through the walkie-talkie. Colette offers to tell her the bad news but he slowly moves to the balcony. He assures Sarah that he is still there. While they sit around the apartment, another earthquake shakes the apartment. Mathieu steps outside onto the balcony to observe what is going on. He notices that the mist has reached their floor level. They understand that the apartment won't be safe anymore. Mathieu decides to go get the hazmat suit he had seen earlier. He also plans to bring oxygen masks for Colette and Lucienne, but Lucienne rejects the idea. Lucienne acknowledges the fact that he and his wife are old, and they don't want to live without their son. After exchanging last words Mathieu leaves the apartment and visits Sarah. Sarah doesn't respond until Mathieu tells her that he is leaving. She is worried that her father is going to end up like her mother. But Mathieu promises her that he will come back for her. Back in their apartment, Lucienne and Colette hold hands on the bed. Like the old couple in Titanic, they let the mist take them. Meanwhile, Mathieu manages to find the suit quickly. On his way back, he comes across a motorcycle and rides it to return home. Suddenly a little boy appears out of nowhere in front of the motorcycle. To avoid hitting the child, he quickly spins around and suffers a severe crash. In the meantime, Sarah tries to contact her dad but gets no answer. Unexpectedly someone enters her room and she looks frozen to see that person. On the outside, Mathieu opens his eyes slowly. He notices the damage to the wound on his head. He tries to pick himself up from the ground along with the suit, but he cannot walk any longer when the wounds get too painful to move. He tries to get up when he realizes two people coming near him. Accompanied by Noe, Sarah runs into her father's arms for the first time in her life. Sarah explains that mist does not affect youngsters. That's how Noe was able to pick her up. Finally, Mathieu is so happy and relieved and he takes his mask off to show affection properly. Next, the same flower field from Mathieu's dream appears but now it's real in 4K HD. Sarah, Noé, and the other children run happily in the field. In the last scene, Mathieu wakes up with his wound treated. In the end, it's Mathieu's turn to live in the capsule while Sarah roams outside free. What do you think about the movie? What would you do to survive the mist? Comment your thoughts below. Make sure to turn on post notifications for future movie recaps. Like and subscribe for more videos.